Hi, I'm Gerard Saylor from the Audi Fargo Public Library of beautiful downtown Lake Mills, Wisconsin. I'm sitting with Mark Kroshauer, a uh, famous poet from Lake Mills, Wisconsin. Uh, of course, when you're talking about poetry, it's all somewhat relative. Uh, but Fame is certainly relative. <laughs> <laughs> Fame is relative. Uh, tell us about your work, tell us about what you've written, and uh, just this, this is the book. It's actually just published. Uh, Mark won the 2009 Felix Pollock Prize in Poetry, selected by Marilyn Nelson. Have you ever met Marilyn Nelson? I haven't. I haven't met her. It's, uh, the award is from the University of Wisconsin Press. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's right. And uh, yeah, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a collection of poems having to do with um, most everything that comes to mind. And yeah. uh, so there's a kind of a wide variety of themes. And How long have you been writing poetry? Well, a long time, though, kind of intermittently. I began in high school, and then I wrote throughout college, and then stopped yeah. writing, and, and uh, kind of took up music again, and then and then came back to poetry. Like my father made the comparison once, you know, poetry used to be so popular, and nowadays it's kind of shifted from, from poetry to to music, hmm. is his thought. And so instead of having poets, you have lyric writers who are kind of, in a way, a modern-day poet. Well, I wasn't aware that, but really, so he... What period was that where poetry was popular? 400 years ago. 400 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the difference between good poetry and bad poetry? You know, I, you know, I guess I can only say, and it's very subjective, you know, people don't like the same poetry. I submit poems to magazines all the time and will be turned down by one that may not be considered anywhere near as yeah. good as, as, as another magazine that picks it up. So it's, it's very subjective, but for the most part, you know, you're looking for a fresh language and a fresh point of view. Does it have to rhyme? It doesn't have to rhyme, but rhyme is pretty effective. Yeah. I mean, if it's not a formal rhyme scheme, there's a lot of times there's internal rhyme. I do that quite a little bit. Because that's mm -hmm. what I hear from a lot of people. If it's not rhyming, it's not a poem. So, your response? Well, my response, they're not getting around poetry circles much. <laughs> um, I could begin with a poem that's actually not in the book. This is a poem called Super Glide. It has to do with uh, someone that I knew that was a, a very gentle, unassuming guy yeah. who, uh, who all of a sudden shows up at his workplace, he was a cook, uh, on this motorcycle, yeah. all dressed up in leather. Like he, he had, as the poem says, he had discovered a secret secret and this had just turned him all the way around. When my friend said he'd had, had enough of Janet's friendly grill, he had done eight months as Phil and Counterman and Prep Chef, and he roared up late one Friday night, pulled in, and parked between the dumpsters and the vent fan. It was beautiful, too. Fringe seats, shorty pipes, and custom bags, chrome heads, chrome forks, chrome carbs, plus monkey bars. But what was beautiful was how this strange, soft man arrived a moment after closing, waved and made a V-sign. But it was how he read the engine once, removed his shades, and then dismounted. Slowly, though. Not like his knees were shot, which, of course, they were. But with a kind of sullen, movie-world, deliberating cool. It was as if this pudgy-fingered, flaky-bearded man, too shy to date, who kept six cats, had overnight become so hip and happy that standing there and grinning like that, Grinning and grinning as he stood there in these new black leather chaps and studded jacket, he found out some huge secret secret. It was how he timed it, too. But it was how, in the light of the buzzing Paps Blue Ribbon sign, we stood around him, three busboys and the fry cook, all of us as lost as ever, except that we were grinning with him, smiling for him, and for a moment, free. So that's, that's super good. <clears throat> I like that. I, before we started recording this, I asked, we were talking about <clears throat> poems and whether or not you get it. T to me, I have a lot of trouble kind of maybe getting it. And your comment was, well, maybe there's nothing to get or you don't need to. But as a tie-in to that, the actual reading out loud is, is makes a big difference. Yeah, I think that's a... That's a good observation. I, and I think people who don't read poetry who are sort of put off by the wide margins and, yeah. you know, everything they've mislearned and about poetry 
if they take a second look. I, I think they tend to come across more clearly than me. What's the reaction you get when you tell people that you're a poet or that you write poetry? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's one. A polite escape. Yeah, sort of a that. polite, you know, let's get this conversation over as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've never worn a beret? No. I haven't worn a beret. <laughs> What's, what do you have next? Written with a feather. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dick and Jane. To think of it now is to remember there was never a winter and it never rained. I mean, there was never a winter and it seemed the sky was blue and the grass was green. I mean, I never said. But after school, I'd lie down on my bed and think, look, Dick, look up and see. And when I opened my eyes, I'd see our backyard tree begin to reason, nodding, wave, and whisper. Except I liked to play, I was like a little man. I swept and mowed, I set the table every day, and every day was filled with fun. Sally and Jane had fun. Spot and Puff had fun, too. Over the corner store, the poach sun sits. I can't say. But to think of it now is to wonder what we should have known. It's morning. Galaxies turn, eternities stretch, as though invisible in plain sight, we're grown ourselves with children of our own. I mean, the spinning earth whirls east and a dog walks wagging by. I can't explain. Inflexible, garrulous, sad, any more were our own full-time jobs. Wasn't Dad the best? Didn't light form in the doorways? Didn't the mailman come? Look, Jane. Oh, turn and look. Past the market, by the playground, here we are. So unhip, so well-meaning and bizarre. So if somebody asked, what's that about? It, why, what am I not getting? What do you say? How do you explain that poem to somebody? Well, the explanation is kind of difficult, but I mean, Dick and Jane would presumably have had this ideal childhood and wasn't right. dad the best and didn't light form in the doorways as with everybody else. But then they go on about their lives and they become adult. And, you know, they don't have that sort of innocent, selfless... Kind of like growing up. They're, they're growing up. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a, a notion I, I like, somehow, that we choose our own parents. Right. And there's some metaphorical truth in it because we get from our parents what we need on some level. But that we literally choose our own parents is another thing. And that's what this poem is about. So it's called We Choose Our Parents. I liked one couple from La Paz, but they were too short. There was another outside Spokane selling bait, but they were too loud or too smart or something. I don't remember. With the pair I chose, I liked the way his arms fit behind hers at the sink. That was part of it. I liked that he stammered and how she was proud when he watched stars and made notes at his desk. She could help him back to Earth. But the night I chose this pair, there'd been words said. There'd been a silence and more words and a long pause and some shouting, and I knew how he wanted to sit down. But well, they both did, and wouldn't. There was a way she'd have her mouth, in a way he'd walk around to keep from crying. Then, later, They'd been quiet a while when there was a telephone call. And when my father hung up, my mother switched the radio on by the stove. It could have been Armstrong or Sinatra or Dorsey. I don't know. But I remember how my father asked her, softly, and then even again, if she'd possibly dance just one, and allowed it's how he himself wouldn't mind. So those are some neat observations. Thanks. But it's, a, but it's a curious <laughs> idea. That you should it's a your curious own idea. Well, to cut this off, I'm Gerard Saylor with Mark Crushar. I won't. I'll put this. I'll do the spelling of your name at the bottom of the screen. Uh, who is poet? Uh, local Brick Falls. Bowling Calling Brick. Brick kills local man from the University of Wisconsin Press. Uh, this is the L.D. Fargo Public Library in beautiful downtown Lake Mills, Wisconsin. That's it.